now. Okay, so as recording has started, I will tell again, this event will be recorded. So if you are not okay about appearing on camera, please uh, switch off your camera. And um, uh, if this, uh, this event is supposed for everyone to talk, it's a brainstorming event, it's a discussion event, and it's for everyone to share experience. So if you want to talk, uh, just write in the chat or raise your hand, or even just unmute yourself. We are only 12 people, so it's fine. And just start talking. It's totally fine. And uh, don't forget the time is important. We have time constraints. And uh, when you talk, please don't forget that there are other 12 people who might to want to talk. That's uh, everything that we need to consider. And uh, now, uh, if you wonder whom this event is for, it's for everyone. But especially if you are passionate about learning and development, or just interested in it, or new, or expert, uh, or interested in designing communities, or mix these things and design communities for learning and development at your workplace. And um, it's important to know that, uh, of course, we want to get some solutions to some challenges, but we cannot solve all the problems. So it's uh, important that we just inspire each other, share ideas, uh, have some networking, and uh, of course, have fun. Uh, and uh, now I would like you to please uh, to have some icebreaker and write in the chat, who are you, where are you from, what, what you're doing, uh, your area of expertise, and if you want people to connect with you, maybe uh, leave a link to your, uh, uh, to your uh, LinkedIn profile. I will uh, start, I will copy paste because I prepared uh, before, and... Uh, yeah, <laughs> and uh, you can uh, continue. Uh, and um, yeah, uh, while you are writing, I will. Uh, I already introduced myself in the chat, but I will also uh, talk uh, a little bit about myself. So I am Olga. I am software engineer. I am uh, passionate about e-learning, especially e-learning at the workplace. I am a co-founder and uh, CEO at Workademy. At Workademy, we build a learning management system for growing companies. And uh, here I combine my two passion and professions, uh, being software engineer who is is passionate about uh, learning and development. Uh, and uh, uh, you can subscribe to Work Academy page uh, on LinkedIn. There you will have updates on this learning and development uh, happy space uh, event uh, or some interesting LD facts or uh, some ed tech news uh, and um, so on. Uh, and um, yeah, now I will uh, pause a little bit just to read what you're writing. Um, uh, Anna Maria, so happy to see you. Hi, uh, uh, Zlata. So please take, take a moment to read uh, what you're writing. Maybe you will be interested to keep connected to, uh, to each other and uh, expand your network to to this wonderful uh, people. Martina, for example, loves to support and enable people and makes, make, make them happy. Uh, Anya is an instructional designer and uh, loves building learning that helps people. You see, we, we all love helping people through learning. It's, uh, it's great. Uh, Zlata loves entertainment. Uh, Anna Maria, Anna Maria is, um, yeah, uh, almost everyone knows what Anna Maria uh, loves and uh, how she uh, helps people. And I think that if we talk about communities, uh, we can um, ask Anna Maria how to do it. Uh, Talvim, uh, LND manager at Travix, my good friend. I'm so happy to see you. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, Alexandra Srishti, uh, nice to meet you. Um, so uh, please read and connect to each other and uh, 
keep uh, this uh, uh, L&D connection rolling even after the event. And uh, yeah, today we are going to talk about uh, design and learning communities in the workplace. And we will be doing this with Lana. So I'm not here on the stage alone. I have a uh, superstar Lana, uh, who, uh, who is a community alchemist, learning experience strategist, public speaker, author, and a lot of other very great uh, things and uh, now I will shut up <laughs> and I will pass the stage to Lana and please Lana uh, in quickly introduce yourself and uh, the topic that uh, we are going to discuss today. Thank you, thank you everyone for being here and for joining us in this exploration on impact and designing learning communities. So two, two topics that I am very much passionate about. So before I dive in into the Satya Change model, um, in the chat, can you just write down, you know, when you think of communities, what comes up in your mind, you know, a, an image, a thought, uh, 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 what's this? A feeling. Uh, just write down what are your associations with communities? What image, thought, or feelings come up for you? Yeah. Connection, belonging, connection, support, warmth, passion, culture, mm, organic. Thank you. Connection, belonging, caring, shared interest. Ooh, bonfire, yes. yes. The idea of uh, being around the campfire. So one of the reasons why I love talking about communities is also because of my own personal experience. So I'm a, I'm a Filipina that has been in the Netherlands for the past 15 years now. And... Coming in from Asia, we're in we're so much we centric you now. We're so much extended to the point that anybody, even you know, even the the neighbors from the next province, has an opinion on what to say about what you're doing or how you're you know how you're being. And then I come to Europe, where in is like oh, it's a stark difference within the the practices, and I realized that I. I, I was longing to bring in this sense of community, you know, this sense of belonging, connection, support um, that, that is not, you know, not often seen in, in different cultures or in different um, uh, societies. We're in the, uh, what's this, we're in the, the framing is very much different. So I started bringing more of the community practices in the work that I've been doing uh, as a learning experience designer. And for the past few years, I've been focusing mostly within learning communities, specific, specifically those who are creating learning communities online. And that's how I got into uh, yeah, writing about community building. So later on, I'll, I'll give you a treat of, uh, uh, for, for the community builders book that I co-wrote. Um, and as I went through this uh, intro reintroduction, to community and also reconnection to community practices, I realized that what we are missing are and what seem to be very tangible you know, uh, in, in uh, other places or other cultures where we have certain models that we can lean on or that we can talk about. And when I started the introducing communities within learning uh, and, and development uh, perspectives, I started the framing of why not, you know, why not we shift from the start with why to a start with who? Because if we are to look at it, you know, at the end or at the root of everything, it's who are we serving in the first place? You know, who are the ones that are learning? Who are we developing? Uh, we might have, be, you know, great projects, programs, but if it does not meet the needs and the strengths of the who, then it's bound to fail. So for me, having a better understanding of who, who are we designing things for is actually where the impact lies. Mm -hmm. And the model that I'll be sharing with you, the, the Satyr Change model by Virginia Satyr, is one of the easiest models that I came across with that tells us you know, the journey of the who and where people are at 
at the given moment in their journey. So I'm going to dive in. And uh, for, for those who are familiar with Saturday Change Model, if you can raise your hand, that would be great. Um, but if not, this is, you know, oh, I see one, yes. <laughs> um, so just a bit of a uh, framing, Virginia Satyr is very well known for one of her other models, which is the iceberg model. So what we see as the tip of the iceberg is, you know, it is smaller as what is underneath it. So she has this personal iceberg model um, that she's very much known for. And she's a family psychotherapist. And now, uh, nowadays, her change model is also being used within organizations to really understand, you know, where are people at in their change journey. So we can go to the old status quo. So this is the, uh, I would say, comfort zone, you know, where, where we are before. And then a foreign element comes in. You know, a foreign element can be a, a sickness, an illness, uh, death in the family, change, you know, moving from one career to another change management. Um, so it, it can be internal and external. Like for our case, we've had a, you know, a global experience of COVID as a foreign element. So we've had our old status quo before COVID, and then we had COVID as a foreign element, and then it trusts us in a space of chaos. Now chaos is, is a place where we experiment, we try new things because we'd want to go back to the old status quo. Um, yet we know that it's not there anymore or that, the, that what is being called from us is to move forward and to see things differently. So there's a space of uh, experimentation that happens here to the point that they get to a transforming idea, you know, that aha moment of, oh, maybe if I try doing this, then things will be different. So this transforming idea can be your program, can be your services, you know, can be a product, can be an experience, uh, can be a practice. So it's different ways we're in. Uh, this transforming idea can land on people. And as they try to integrate this uh, transforming ideas more, you know, that integration and practice across time, it lands you to the new status quo. And then as you go with, you know, again, this is more like an expanding spiral model. So as you go with a new status quo, eventually across time, it becomes an old status quo until again, another foreign element comes in. So in a nutshell, if you, if you can see, it's such a very easy, easy framework. What I love about this framework as well is that when we're looking at, you know, from a lens of change, we also see that at each different phases, there are things that um, people need, yeah, or uh, there, there, there are different um, ways in which they can be further supported. And these are the ones that are in colored. Um, so in the old status quo, when you think of who you're serving within your organizations and the change that you'd want to bring out for them, um, in the old status quo, what they really need is awareness. Uh, so this is, um, if, you, if you're saying, you know, within the, the L&D um, program, especially on, say, for example, if it's a, on a personal development, you know, how to prevent burnout would be part of that, you know, an awareness building on how to prevent burnout so that they don't get into that space of chaos. So awareness building is very important. If you know that people will be, if people keep on doing this, they'll be in a trajectory of chaos. What is it that they need to know? And what are the capabilities that they need to start practicing so that even if a foreign element comes in, the chaos will not be as deep for them. So that's that's what you're trying to, to mitigate, right? And when people are in a space of chaos, what is very much important is how are we providing space so that they can find acceptance in where they're at right now? And I think this is also one of the reasons why COVID was very tricky uh, because we didn't know how to give space for how people were possible in their COVID experiences. So everybody was in different states of chaos. So how do we, you know, how do we create those spaces where we understand where people are at in their chaos? You know, are they really in deep shit or are, are, they, are they struggling? Are they, you know, if we don't give those spaces, we wouldn't know. And oftentimes what we're seeing right now in, in, um, in, in people who are uh, in organizations that have the, oh, let's go back to work and not processing that space of chaos, we're missing out on 
how are they you know have they fully integrated have they have they gone out of chaos in the first place so for 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 me when when we look at chaos it's a very fertile period of experimentation so helping them to try out new you know new ways of doing things and also exposing them to new ways of doing things yet it should not be something that would tie them down for a long time because in the space of chaos they they need to have an experience of something and then for them to see if it works for them or not so if you're going to try creating a, you know an LD program uh, where you see people are still in a space of chaos do not make it like a three months six months program create something that's very tangible that's easy for them to to try out to see results and then to try out again so this is this is a way for them to find that experimentation and exploration so that they can get to that transforming idea quicker and then when we're looking at integration and practice you know so integration what is really important here is the articulation of hey this is what i really want to do you know hey this is what i how how i'd want to change or how i'd want to to do things differently and in this space of uh integration and practice you know what is very important here is really harnessing the power of community because change or impact happens when they when it is done with others so how are you um, making sure that they are practicing and integrating this new you know this new practices this new um learning this new this new skills in relation to others you know? so this is where you can create your communities of practice this is where you can create cohorts this is where you say oh we have you know we have um learning sessions that we do together mm. and as they apply things and over time, you know, when they get to the new status quo, then people are filled with a lot of abundance. They, they, they see already that, oh, I've gone through this and now I can give, give back to others. So people in the new status quo, they have this overwhelming um, sense of altruism you know, because they've seen how they've gone through the different phases, especially the space of chaos and that they've navigated through it and they just want to share it with others. This is why programs like Train the Trainers or uh, what's this, um, Skillshares are very important. You know, tapping into the collective wisdom and allowing them to share what they've learned to other people during this time is very important. So it allows that activism and altruism to grow within an organization. And with that, you know, you have people then who are very much inclined to to share what they know what they've learned what they are practicing with others in the hopes that yeah those that might be in the old status quo or still in chaos or still integrating and practice can find themselves in this change that you'd want them to see so i'm gonna pause here first <laughs> i know i spoke so quickly perhaps we could just have one or two questions before we dive in in trying to fill in the um the sector change model questions or impressions okay hi, yeah hi Alana. Um, sorry i'm not familiar with this model i haven't seen it before um and you mentioned that um uh corona or the covid or the pandemic could have been used as an example of this um, chaos uh, period yes. of chaos um, can you have a, like? Do you have any other um, examples of uh, periods of chaos? That yeah. So be... <clears throat> another period of chaos can be change of management, for example. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, or um, if not change of management, even change of uh, leaders. Yeah. Uh, um, it can also be if there's uh, merging within organizations. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Sure. Sorry. Yeah. So anything that in, in essence rattles you from out yeah. of your comfort zone yeah anything that's not business as usual and then you're like anything that requires change okay exactly. okay I've got it. okay exactly okay thank you and this Sorry. is why this is why this change model is very um interesting to use within that context right because we would always experience change within yeah. organizations even yeah. if it's just say for example introducing a new policy yeah. That that is already a, a point of you know a, a place where change needs to happen. Sure. So and then different people experience or different teams experience chaos differently. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. That's much clearer. Okay. Thank you very much, Lana. Yeah. Anna Maria. Oh, hi. I'm already unmuted. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm in my kitchen doing lunch break as well. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, everyone. And hi, uh, Lana. Thank you so much. This is awesome. And just a reflection. I'm curious how everyone sees that or how, how you see that because. I think we often think at this chaos moment as coming from something that we can't control or something external, but I think that chaos can very much be coming from within, from within our own selves, from a reflection, from, uh, from a change that we bring to life ourselves, which exactly. makes it very individual and very yeah. personal and very... Yeah complex <laughs> yeah and, and this is also why it needs to be from an inside and outside perspective uh, like say for example if you're if, if you're in your organization you're saying okay because of the DEI we would want to create new policies on how to hire people and then that becomes then the foreign element mm -hmm. that takes people into chaos you know so you can as an organization be the one that steers in that foreign element mm. and of course before you implement something like a merger or a change in management for those who are you know looking through this as, as a framework you might be able to plan for resistance you know what might be areas where people would resist such a change so that that space of chaos can easily be addressed so that's one way, you know, from a you know from from a more strategic point of view, when what you're offering is a foreign element, or what you're going to create within the organization is a foreign element because it's something new, it's something unexpected, it's something that they're not used to. Then, what you can do is plan for obstacles, you know, plan for resistance, and then how might you be able to create those spaces where you allow for that resistance to be heard, to be um, dealt with compassion and also to provide them with the skills that they would need to transition from, from this space of chaos. And then that goes both internal and external as well. Alexandra. Yes, thank you, Lana. It's always a pleasure uh, hearing you. Um, and thank you for presenting the, the Satcher change model. One of the things that people are afraid of is actually chaos. Uh, yes. because it is chaotic. <laughs> and so my question for you is, how do you succeed in making people love chaos? Yeah. Uh, so, or is loving chaos necessary for the process? Yeah, yeah. embracing, you know, for me, it's, yeah. the, it's the, how can we embrace chaos? So one of the, if we go also with systems thinking, right? So it's always going to be complex. Nothing has ever been simple, right? So, so if we go by that, that idea that, um, everything is always complex and, 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 and chaos is a part of, of, of our lives. Um, how, how can we then frame it differently? You know, that's the embracing of, of the chaos. And for me, one thing that really helped is also introducing how do we respond um, to emergence? Uh, so emergent strategy is a way that has helped a lot of organizations that I've worked with to respond to these changes that needs to happen along the way. So if it's part, you know, attending to emergence is part of the company culture or the learning culture, embracing chaos becomes an easier part of it because then, you know, oh, okay, we're bound to be in chaos anyway. So how can we, you know, how can we navigate through it together? So emergence, and there's a powerful book about emergence strategy that, that I, I would definitely recommend. Yes, I think we have then the time to go into our, um, I would be sharing the Jamboard. Yeah, th this is exactly what I wanted to say that <laughs> around 20, something minutes before we should wrap up. So it's better to jump into yes. the next uh, thing. So in the Jamboard, uh, you would see that there are different sides. So if you, there's a, um, what's this, an arrow on the top. Uh, so you can just move, pick your own. 
and then try to plot you know where are the people in your um in your team in your organizations where are they in their in their journey you know and what's what's a possible foreign element that your um organization your group your team you know, your learning community is going through or what's a possible foreign element that you would want to introduce and maybe you want to plot it in in the space of what will be their chaos? How would be their 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 chaos? And um, what's a transforming idea? And normal, oftentimes a transforming idea is is what you you know what what you'd want them to practice, you know, what you'd want them to uh, hold on to as a way to um, do things differently. So each one you have your own slides, and we'll take fit. 15, 10, 10 minutes quickly to just plot things or just take a sticky note, um, add your thoughts in as what is their status quo? What do you notice? And then what's the foreign element that uh, was introduced or you know what that they've experienced? And how are they in the space of chaos? You know, what are they experiencing? And perhaps a new status quo might be the easiest one to think of, of like what's the change that you'd want them to to experience. And of course, if it, this is hypothetical, you know, these are all assumptions that the new status quo will be like this, but it gives you all, yeah, it gives you a framing of this is the change and the impact that you'd want them to, to be in. So I'm going to pause and yeah, we'll have 10 minutes to go through this. I'm not sure if Deborah has just joined or I just uh, didn't see Deborah before. Uh, but uh, Deborah, if no, you... I, I know that. So it looks like she didn't connect. Ah. Yeah, yeah, I see, I see her. Okay. Uh... Uh, sure. Deborah, you can just open the the jump board and uh, uh, find your slide and uh, put things in <laughs> and uh, ask Lana if you need any support in this.
especially in the space of practice and integration, bring in, you know, what, what are your assumptions on what's the knowledge that they need to have? What are the skills that they need to practice? And what are the mindsets that they need to shift? How long do we still have, Lana? Three minutes.
Okay. So how is that as an exercise of trying to plot the the change within yeah your team, your organization, the anyone who would like to share? I, I really liked it. It's uh, it's like yeah, as you said, uh, begin with the uh, with an end in mind. It uh, helps a lot and uh, yeah, I I think it's a great exercise even for personal things, not only professional. Yes, exactly. Yeah, you can definitely use it to plot your own uh, where you where you are in your journey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I really liked this jumbo uh, <laughs> jamboard. <laughs> by the way, yeah, really cool. Anyone else who would like to share your impressions in plotting it in? Which, which part was the, the, the easiest for you to fill in? For me, it was for an element. <laughs> it's very real, right? That's, that's also the thing. When you have uh, a foreign element that's here and in, in your face, so it's just something that you cannot, you know, you just cannot look at. So, and, and that also is why when we attend to chaos, we cannot just say, oh, you know, let's let's do things differently and and not attend to what is alive in the, the organization. So it, it's it's very important that we create spaces for that game. Okay? Uh, yeah, I, I personally found it quite challenging to even identify what the uh, status quo would be in the sense of like, what's the problem that needs to be addressed? Because quite often that doesn't... Um, it's not that apparent um, at the beginning. And sometimes you actually need to think about what do you need to change? Um, so I think once that kind of, I worked with Lena on this together. Uh, and once we kind of established what we could change, um, that kind of made the process actually a little bit easier. Uh, Olga, would you be okay to move it to Graeme and Lena's slide so that we can... So one of the things that's also um, when we're looking at the, the new status quo, again, like what you said, there's so many factors, right? So, so many areas. So you might want to, when you're plotting this, you might want to plot it in what's the immediate change that you'd want, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. have another chart that's more of what's the midterm, what's the long term, mm -hmm. yeah. so that you can plot it in also in stages. Yeah. Uh, say, for I example, think, within the next 90 days, yeah. what is it that we'd want? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like these bite-sized steps, I think, would be quite helpful um, to brainstorm each stage as you go along. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, you probably come up with some better ideas. <laughs> yeah. And this is very, uh, it's a very helpful tool also in, like I said, coming up with solutions, you know, possible solutions to, to uh, problems or to, to possible problems as well. Yeah. So you, you're you anticipating what yeah. can be chaos for, for your organization. Yeah. Yeah. So and it I helps can... you to plan more. Yeah, definitely. And I can I think the anticipation, the anticipation side of things is a lot, makes it a lot easier for organizations because if like, for example, something like um, a pandemic comes along or um, a war, then it makes it, it's a lot harder. You know, it's a lot, you can't plan for these things. And um, yeah. so, like, if you can try and anticipate, but, if, but for, for things which you can try and anticipate, it's like, yeah, very like yeah. useful process. Yeah. Thank you, Jane. Anna Maria. Um, I think I have a question. Um, would you pair this with a prior persona personas mapping? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you can um, you can actually create journeys for different personas. Yeah. And would you, to which extent, could we use this for as a as a co-created approach, like oh. as a workshop where people are in and we're all putting our heads together yes. to figure this out? You can definitely use this within teams. Hmm. Um, what might be fascinating to see is different people might have different ways of seeing things. 
Mm. In terms of um, uh, an organization that I worked with, they used this to plot where are we as an, you know, as an organization. And it was very evident that, oh, management thought that they're more into the practice and integration when people are still a lot in chaos. So there was more, uh, what's this, uh, awareness of where the team members were because of the process. So it, it provides that transparency as well. Mm. And one last question, Anna, do you also have like tools that you use for deeper, going deeper, digging deeper for each and one of these stages? So if we are in chaos, do you go like a level deeper with a set of tools to help them make sense of it and plan ahead? Well, so the, this one that you, you, you see, this is currently in the community builders, designing communities for change workbook. And we're right now um, creating the second one for redesigning com uh, companies as communities. So that will be there. <laughs> it okay, will cool. be there. So it will be out within the year, uh, within the next, uh, the next few months. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Other questions? And then um, as, a, as a bonus for those who would want to explore this further. So yeah, Olga, okay, if you go to the last part of the slide, um, there, there is, if I go to the, all the way to the last one, uh, there's a template that uh, I've also attached, oh, 15, there you go. There's a template that I've also attached that you can help explore more as, as, a, as an organization or as a team, where what are the patterns you know that, that you see or you notice from the different experiences? So maybe you, we can speak to that since we still have a few more a uh, few more minutes. So like like given what you've just you know what you what you've just filled in, what patterns do you notice within your team, within your organization, within your L and D uh, activities? This is the question, right? To, to the yeah. group. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so um, I uh, I think that uh, it's uh, when it's like major uh, chaos. You you can see that people are not uh, that productive, right? You can see that uh, they might be in almost in burnout stage. Uh, yeah. yeah. So is is that what um, what yes, that's 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 a pattern, right? That it yeah, affects, yeah. if it affects productivity, it affect, affects uh, efficiency. Uh, it probably affects also uh, um, retention rate. You know? mm -hmm. So, so there might be those type of patterns that you would notice because of yeah whatever L and D strategy that you've uh, introduced or what they are going through the changes that they. Um, and then if you look at the gifts, you know, what gifts or strengths do you notice from these people? Um, sometimes it's so difficult to, to think of strengths because we're so primed within the, what do they need? Mm -hmm. So for me, I'd love to taper it with asset-based community development in, in terms of thinking people inherently have gifts and strengths that they bring in. So how can we amplify those gifts? Even, even when they're also in the space of chaos, they have gifts. So how are we tuning into those gifts? So perhaps, yeah, um, for, from others, uh, what, what gifts have you noticed within, within your activities, within your team, within your organization as they navigated through this process of change? No, you, oh, oh, there's the bar. Um, there, yeah, I was I was wondering, would you consider friction as a gift? So like mm. these agreements and having yeah. tough conversations or really having this diverse perspective from the team, having team members that are able to speak up their minds. Um, yeah. So so you've nailed it on the diversity as, as a gift, right? So the diversity within organizations allow for different perspectives as well. So they bring in their perspectives. Uh, it also allows for being able to sit in tension. So having the ability 
ability for the team to 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 up their level or the, you know when it comes to conflict management to uh, attending to uh, yeah brave spaces creating brave spaces so I would say those are very powerful gifts that the a situation can bring in. Olga, you wanted to. No, no, no. I was just uh, trying to uh, encourage people to to speak about. <laughs> uh, are there any specific techniques for looking for gifts in people? Yeah. So one of the things that I love uh, is is really at the start, you know, of making them tune into their gifts. So there's there's uh, the the via character or uh, the strengths finder. You know? So how are we uh, um, what's this how are we aware of the gifts that people bring in the first place so it can be part of say for example when you're creating an onboarding strategy that you ask them to fill in a strengths finder or uh, via character so that's via um and and then to just have them you know like they can have like a, their, their own pdf of the strengths and then allow them to speak to those strengths of what if these are your strengths how do you bring this in in the organization so these are just ways where we we can say oh oh i know when you know when i talk to this person this person has this strengths because it's available for them they can see that you know they they have a way to to know that so probably having a board with you know these are my top skills or um, what's this? These are the, you know, this is these are the strengths that I bring in. So it makes it easier for people to find each other in the organization as well. Yeah, I think that uh, the problem sometimes that uh, some people even are not aware about yes. their superpowers and they just do it because it's super easy for them. But exactly. uh, being yeah. super easy, it's their superpower. So it might be like uh, maybe community building uh, thing could be that people could help identify the superpowers in in their team members exactly and and this one is one of the free tools that you can use that can have uh your yeah your your list of strengths basically and then it's something that can be put in as part of uh what's this as part of an onboarding process for example Zlata, can you share a little bit more about this Johari window? Yeah, so you were talking about the things you know and don't may not know about yourself. So just had the idea that it's very similar to this Johari window That's where right. there are like four quadrants of the things you know about yourself and others know about you, the things you don't know, but others know, then the things you know, but others don't, and then you don't know and others don't know. And that... Um, the thing goes as the more uh, aware you are of all these um, uh, areas, like the better you and the community know you, so the better connections you may build. But of course, that depends on the level of, I know, honesty, and, uh, how much you're ready to share. But uh, basically, getting as much feedback as possible you uh, kind of like um, lift this uh, shadow of war, yeah, uh, of the things that you don't know about yourself. So that's that's what I had in mind. Thank you. I do hope you can use this. Um, I, I think we're sharing anyway the slides. Olga, are we sharing the slides with them as well? Uh, I'm sure I'm sharing the slides uh, on Canva. Uh, do, do, do we still need to share? Uh, no, no, I mean, I mean, uh, after the call, they'll have access to. Ah, ah yes, of course. Uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. if you'd want to use the, those as, as tools in, like I said, you can use this individually, you know, um, you can use this within a team, you can even use this within organizations. So it's really, uh, yeah, multi level, wherein you can start with, let's plot something individually and then match it. And then see how you know how everyone uh, feels this in, or you can use this as yeah brainstorming together as a team. So it allows for us to yeah really look into different perspectives, and at the same time, uh, what might come in. And this is why I like writing key questions yeah, for for us to to attend to also what's what, what where are the points of inquiry or curiosity around people. Um, so having that as a space where we harvest questions 
uh, allows us to also, again, deepen our awareness and understanding of where people are at. So I do hope that in your L&D activities, when you're designing communities for change, we really look at, we start with who as a process. Um, one of the yeah, one of my my mentors. He, if you if you want to read through, um, his name is Michelle Backman, and he has an article in Medium on Start with the Who. It's actually how I got really into this idea of yeah, we're doing things differently if we're always start starting with an idea or a solution in mind. But if we really start with who, then we get to um look at where they're at you know what strengths do they bring in what are their needs and then be able to design and uh, create opportunities where we they you know we, we will begin with that and in mind for them so it really gets uh into a deeper awareness and understanding of who we're serving and who we we would want to uh, develop in our programs so thank you for yeah, for having me to share this. And uh, if you have further questions, uh, please feel free to reach out. And I know, Olga, we also have, yeah, I think we still have some time for. Yeah, we have uh, five minutes to wrap up. Uh, before we do that, I would like to have your very short feedback. If you could write in the chat window, um, like, a, a, thing one thing that you liked the most about this event and one thing that you disliked about this event it would be great for me and lana to to have your uh, ideas and see how we can improve uh, for the for the next events and while you're writing i will uh, wrap up uh, on one small note about work academy lana in the beginning you were saying that uh, the environment where people have this altruism and activism is the environment where people share knowledge uh, and uh, this made me really happy because we try to build our uh, learning management system our work academy to empower anyone in the company to share knowledge and to enable employees to um, 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 to create uh, trainings and uh, help uh, their team members to grow. So I think we are in the uh, in the right direction. Um, thank you for that. And usually in the end of these events, we have some offers or discount to announce to the uh, member members of uh, this uh, community and to participants. I don't have a discount from Work Academy, but we are running a special campaign. Uh, now I, I um, uh, it will be a um, long running campaign. So basically we uh, have a we donate half of the subscription price of Work Academy to help Ukraine. So if you are looking for a learning management system uh, for growing companies, uh, uh, talk to me. I am always here for you. And uh, Lana has uh, also some uh, things to offer to you. Uh, she mentioned a couple of times her uh, amazing core book on Community Builder, and there is a discount uh, code for you. So please take a note and uh, let's stay connected, let's stay in touch, and let's uh, keep uh, learning and development rolling and be amazing part of our lives. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you, everyone. Oh, thank you also. Thank, for thank, all your thank you. Thanks, Lana. Thanks, Olga. I just had a quick question. Uh, so, I, I heard one of you mention it earlier about the slides. Will they be um, accessible somewhere? Or? Yes, I will send uh, a wrapping up email uh, through uh, this Luma and uh, I will send the slides and you will get them. Oh, great. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Okay, yeah, yeah, you can, uh, if you want, you can go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just need to finish writing my feedback. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will stay until, uh, until the end, but uh, you are uh, free to switch off. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you so much. Have a good one. Thank, thank you, you too. Bye. Bye.
start stop recording. Oh yeah, I will stop recording. Mm -hmm.